Okay, back table to my left. What did you come up with this for this one? Yeah, your table. Okay, is the equation balanced now, class? Sure. Now, what about those subscripts? When you have this on the quiz and test, you have to put the subscripts in there. What goes here? Solid. Sulfates are usually soluble, but not when they hook up with barium. Okay, then they fall out of solution. And what goes here? AQ. Okay, front table here. What goes on this next one? Okay, is that what everybody got? That is right. Okay, now, is that equation balanced at this point? No. So what do I have to do to fix that? Okay, I have three carbonates, right? So I'll put a three here. Now how many sodiums does that give me? Six. So now that gives me six bromines. What do I have to do to fix that? Put a two here. Okay, now we have a balanced equation. Now, what do I do about the subscripts? What goes here for aluminum carbonate? Solid and sodium bromide? Aqueous. So, what do you think? This is a little tougher than the single replacement, right? I think it is. And it's a little harder because you're trading partners, so you really have to be able to break things apart. You have to know those ions, and then you have to practice, study, and learn those um, solubility rules. So we've talked about double replacement, and now we're going to look at those neutralization reactions. We identified them as something different because they are acid and base making a salt plus water. But the thing is, they're still double replacement. So we follow the same rules. The difference is that often we make a weak electrolyte. We don't make a solid. We don't make a precipitate. We made a weak electrolyte. Ionic compounds break apart into their ions when we put them in water. Weak electrolytes stay mostly in the molecular form. So what that means is water is a weak electrolyte. So if I have a beaker of water and I look in that beaker of water with my molecule seeing eye, I see lots and lots of water molecules floating around there. I really wish I had a molecule seeing eye. So I'll see lots of water floating around in there. I'll see a very small amount where the water broke apart and I have hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. And by very small, I mean about 1 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter. Okay, that's really small. Most of the water stays hooked together. So it is a weak electrolyte. Things like hydrochloric acid and sodium chloride and most of our ionic compounds that dissolve they break apart completely, so we don't see any of the molecule in there. If I have salt water and I have sodium and chloride in there, what I see is sodium ions and chloride ions because it is a strong electrolyte, so it breaks apart completely. So that's a new definition is that electrolyte. Now, how do you recognize that something is a weak electrolyte? Well, for us, the easiest way is to say it's not a strong electrolyte. How do we know if it's a strong electrolyte? So, strong electrolytes are ionic compounds, and we recognize ionic compounds because most of them have a metal and a nonmetal, and 
The ammonium ion is the one exception. Strong electrolytes are ionic compounds or the strong acids are strong electrolytes. Now, we've talked about acids before, and we recognize acids because we have hydrogen written first and an AQ subscript. There are seven strong acids. You have to memorize this list. Once you know the seven strong acids, every other acid is weak. So, they are hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydriodic acid, nitric acid, chloric acid, perchloric acid, and sulfuric acid. So hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydriodic, nitric, chloric, perchloric, and sulfuric. Those are the seven strong acids. If it's not one of those seven, then it's a weak acid. And if it's a weak acid, it's a weak electrolyte. So you can see there's a lot more memorizing stuff, or I say practice, study, learn, so that you don't forget it. But there's a lot of stuff that you have to remember now as we go into writing these equations. So let's look at this. HCl, that's a strong electrolyte. It breaks apart completely, so we write it as aqueous. Plus sodium hydroxide gives us water when we trade partners. Plus sodium chloride. So now we don't have any solubility rule for water because does water dissolve in itself? I mean, water is water. So water gets the liquid, the L liquid subscript. Sodium chloride, sodium makes things dissolve, so it gets an AQ subscript. And we look at this one and check this is already balanced as it is. Now let's look at the next one, sulfuric acid and sodium carbonate. So what happens when I trade partners here? What do I make? you got to talk louder, Chad. I can't hear you with the sun. Sodium sulfate, and we write the proper formula, sodium sulfate, and what else? What does hydrogen do? Combines with the carbonate, and this is what you think it does, right? We think we'd get carbonic acid. So now when we look at this, both of these would be aqueous, but the carbonic acid does something funny that you're not anticipating. And this is another thing you have to practice, study, learn. Anytime you make carbonic acid, it breaks apart. Okay, think about my Diet Coke. When I open the can, what happens? Right, you hear that fizzing? Because there's carbon dioxide gas coming out. And that has carbonic acid in it. So when you have carbonic acid, it breaks apart and you get a surprise. You get water and carbon dioxide gas. So we think we're getting carbon di uh, car carbonic acid, but we get carbon dioxide, gas, and water. So now when we look at this, we get water, liquid, and CO2 gas. So I've done two of those things. I have real chemistry going on. I made a weak electrolyte, and I made a gas. So that's kind of a twofer there. Okay, go ahead on the next page. There's two for you to try.